Good evening, Munir Ajam, uh, with another video on project management. In this video, uh, if you allow us, it will be maybe a bit of uh, knowledge sharing plus a commercial. Uh, I haven't recorded any videos in a few days. I've been trying to finish a book that uh, it's uploading right now as we speak uh, to send to the publisher hopefully to be published sometime in the next few months, hopefully before summer. Uh, this book is about the methodology we have developed in 2007, and we have published a series of books about it uh, between 2010 and 2014. But this uh, recent book is actually uh, the most comprehensive one, and it reflects an update of the methodology to version 3. Uh, in 2000, we have spoken in many videos about the PMBOK and we said that the PMBOK is usually not enough to manage project and we gave some reasoning for this, including some uh, direct quotation from the PMBOK. Uh, since we've been working with the PMBOK for many years, we have discovered this, basically, that first, the PMBOK is not a methodology. Uh, as we discussed before, the PMBOK is not a best practice and the PMBOK guide is only a subset of the body of knowledge and uh, therefore is not a complete for managing project. Primarily what's missing is, uh, is a methodology that basically that help us visualize how to take a project from idea to closure. And as we used to uh, lead the uh, training and uh, workshops on the Pumba guide and PMP preparation, we always felt and our participants felt that something was missing. And of course, what was missing is that the PMBOK focus on processes and knowledge area, but doesn't focus on methodology. So people understand the need to do a WBS, to do an estimate, to do a schedule, to do quality plan, but when and where and how, that wasn't clear. And obviously, that's not a mistake from the PMBOK guide. It's just basically the PMBOK guide is not designed to be a manual or a methodology. As a result of that, we decided to build our methodology, and we have developed the customizable and adaptable methodology for managing project back in 2007, 2008, and uh, in 2010, it was our first book that written as a story about it. And then we have published a series of books and ebooks and articles on our blog sites. Uh, now we have upgrading this methodology to the third version. With the primary difference between this methodology and the previous one is that now or the previous version, is that now we are labeling this as a, uh, this methodology as a three-dimensional model. What do we mean by three-dimensional model? And uh, this will be the brief explanation for the rest of this video. Many people who use the PMBOK depend on the process groups alone. And many think that the process group are project phases. And I think we've covered this more than, more than once in earlier videos. And just a reminder, the process group are not project phases. And the intention of the Pumba guide is that these process groups should repeat in every phase. Unless the project, of course, is very small uh, and simple. So one of the dimensions, so basically when we talk about three-dimensional model, is that obviously one of the dimensions would be the processes. But as we said, the processes first are not enough there is a PMBOK admission, and there are uh, what's missing is a methodology, and what's also missing is many processes. I mean, if one reads the PMBOK guide carefully, you will find that a lot of concepts and processes are discussed, but they don't have a dedicated process. Like, for example, develop change management plan. Ideally, there should be a process for that. However, PMI included this, or the PMBOK included this as part of the develop project management plan. There are There is a staffing plan. Again, this is part of HR, but doesn't have a dedicated process. There is a process improvement plan in quality, but doesn't have a dedicated process. So basically, in terms of the number of processes, the PMBOK, we think, is deficient. The PMBOK guide is deficient. That's one. Second one is a methodology. So let me stay with, stay with the processes. So when we, as a part of this version three, when we look at these processes from the PMBA guide and we felt, what, okay, what's missing? We actually modified in our books, this is a book that we are publishing now, we have modified the process group to six instead of five, and we added two knowledge areas 
or should we call them functions. So now in our book, there are six process groups or what we call the main processes. And there are 12 functions. And in between them, there are 76 processes or what we call sub processes. So basically the way we are looking at this is that we look at initiating process, uh, planning process or management planning process, detailed planning process, implementing process, a controlling process and a closing process. And each one of these processes includes sub processes. That's one of the way we are looking at uh, that one of the modification we are making in our books in regard to the dimension that is related to the PM processes. Another dimension, which is the primary dimension, we call it dimension, first dimension in the methodology, is a project life cycle. And the project life cycle that SUCAD has as part of CAMP, the standard model, which needs to be modified and customized based on organizational needs, it consists of three phases and nine stages. Uh, so each of these phases consists of two or more. So basically we have the concept phase, the discovery phase, the development phase, and the delivery phase. We have discussed these in prior videos, so I'm not going to repeat them here. So basically, what we are saying is that to manage project in any organization, first you need to have the first dimension, which is a methodology, a project lifecycle model that helps you visualize how to take a project from idea to closure. Second thing we need, the second dimension, which is the processes, such as was covered in the Pumba Guide and ISO 21500. What... Uh, and this used to be uh, CAMP as we know it as version 1 and 2. With version 3, we are modifying CAMP to add a third dimension. And the third dimension is basically consists of layer. Just think about the 3D. Uh, so 1D, if we think about horizontal, left to right if we're speaking English, left to right would be the life cycles. And uh, vertically in every stage of the project life cycle, the process group, uh, repeats, the processes repeat. And then now we can up and come and add a layer on top of these two dimensions. And these layers are usually what will help organization move from good project management to uh, great project management and potentially becoming a center of excellence. What are these layers? We call them advanced topic layers. Well, one of them is that uh, best practices. In every industry, there should be some specific best practices that can be used for project. For example, in the capital project, the CII, the Construction Industry Institute, publish about 17 best practices that will be useful for capital project. I'm sure there are similar kind of concept in some industries, but I'm sure, but also we can say that not many industries have best practices. Forget what people call best practice. You remember, even the Pumbuck people say it's a best practice, it's not, and we've discussed this before. So basically, one of the layers that we can add is the, uh, as we want to elevate project management performance, we might want to add the application of best practices, uh, which is uh, based on the industry we have. Another layer could be related to competence. IPMA, the International Project Management Association, the published individual competence baseline, organizational competence baseline. There are also other organizations that publish competency standard such as GAP, the Global Alliance for Project Performance Standard. And these would be great references to implement competence in, uh, in an organizational project management system with a methodology. Another layer would be sustainability. Uh, GPM Global published guide and standard for sustainability. And then we think definitely sustainability is an advanced topic and it should be considered for application on all projects as a third layer. And we added SUCAD model project success as another layer. These are the layers that we add. So to summarize this video, uh, obviously we can create more videos on this. Um, the third, uh, the, uh, the CAMP model, the customizable and adaptable methodology for managing project. Version three consists of a three dimensional model. Dimension one is a life cycle model. Dimension two is the repetition of the process groups in every stage or phase. And dimension three, which are the advanced topics such as project success, best practice, competence, and sustainability. With these three dimensions, um, uh, and th these are the main focus of the book we are publishing, we, are, we just finished today. Um, good evening. We'll talk again.